guys, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're all doing really well today. So last week I posted a video where I went a little bit into pattern making with Adobe Illustrator. So I thought today I would do a video where I would draft a full simple pattern in Adobe Illustrator and do something a little bit more simple so that you can follow along with the entire process. So the pattern and the project that I will be making today is this basic long sleeved t-shirt that is very fitted and made for a pretty stretchy knit. And then I'm going to be using that pattern to make this stripy t-shirt. This is one of my wardrobe basics. I always like to have a selection of striped t-shirts and I absolutely love how this one turned out. It's a little bit longer and very fitted, which makes it perfect for tucking into jeans or skirts or whatever I want to wear it with. This fabric is from Mood Fabrics. It's a nice, soft, lightweight, stretchy jersey. And I love the ivory with the black for the color combination on this particular stripe. I will divide this video into two sections. So there will be the pattern making section and then the sewing section. So you can skip to whatever you're interested in watching. And let's go ahead and jump in to this project. So I thought for today's video that I would do a full walkthrough of drafting a basic t-shirt pattern in Adobe Illustrator. So we are here at my computer today and I'm going to be using the instructions from the book Metric Pattern Cutting for Women's Wear by Winifred Aldrich. And the specific instructions that I will be using today are from page 200. These are the close fitting body blocks. So I'm going to walk through the whole process here on my computer today. So let me go ahead and jump in to some pattern making. So to get started making this pattern using Adobe Illustrator, I'm first going to open a new artboard. I'm going to make mine 100 centimeters by 100 centimeters. You just want to make sure it's big enough for you to have lots of room to draw. And then using the line tool, I'm going to draw one vertical line and one horizontal line that connect at the top corner. These don't have to be any specific length. This is just what I'm going to use to base the pattern off of. And to keep those lines straight, just hold shift down while you use the line tool and they'll stay nice and straight. Then I'm going to use the text tool to mark this top intersection as 0. 0.0. And once I have that marked, I'm going to go ahead and paste in all of the body measurements I will be using for this pattern. And then I can go ahead and draw 0.0, 0 to 0.1. So this line will be the length from the neck to the waist plus one centimeter. So for me, that is 42 centimeters. So I'm going to create a line that is 42 centimeters long and vertical. And I'm going to go ahead and add a four point stroke here just so that you guys can see it on the screen. I will shrink this down a little bit later. And then I will just align this line with the lines I created earlier making sure that everything is aligned at the top. I'm also going to go ahead and add arrowheads to the ends of the lines so that I can see the points a little bit better. I learned this from the pattern workshop class and it's really, really helpful. So I will be adding these to most of my lines and then I can go ahead and mark this point as point one. And then from point zero to point two is the full length of the shirt. So for this, I am just going to use my waist to hip measurement, which is 20.7 centimeters. And then I will align this line with point one and then mark the lower point as point two. And then for both points one and two, I'm going to use the line tool to square across here. And this is just going to give me my waistline and my hemline. So the next marking is from point zero to point three, and this is a vertical line. This is the arm sky depth minus three centimeters. So for me, that is a line that is 18 centimeters long, and I'm going to go ahead and align this with the top line and then mark this lower point as point three. I'm also going to go ahead and square across here because we will need this line to reference a little bit later on. So next we're going to add in 0.4 and to do this, I am just going to cut the line that is zero to three in half because this measurement is half the distance between zero and three. So I can use my scissors tool to do this and just hover until it says intersect and then cut that line in half. Then I'll just square across and then mark this point as 0.4.
Now this next one is a little bit different. This is 0.0 to 0.5. And for this line, we need a distance that is one eighth of the measurement of zero to four. So for this, I am going to take this line from zero to four and copy it over to the side. And then I am going to remove the arrowheads from this line and then mark it with lines dividing it into eight sections. These can be any length. We just want enough little lines to divide this into eight sections. So now I can go ahead and select each of these little lines and then I will use the distribute tool to distribute these evenly vertically so that my line is divided into eight even sections. Then I can just make a little line using one of those sections as a measurement guide. So now I can go ahead and delete my little guides here and then I will take this line over to the rest of the block and I'm going to match this up to the top of point zero. Then I'll mark the lower point on this line as 0.5. The next line is a horizontal line. This is 0.0 to 0.6. And for this measurement, I am taking one sixth of the next size plus one centimeter. So for me, this is just a little bit over seven centimeters. Then I'm going to align this line with 0.0 and mark the extension as 0.6. And then from 0.6, I'm going to go ahead and square up for a reference later on. Next, we have a vertical line. This is 0.6 to 0.7, and this is a set measurement of 1.3 centimeters. So I'm going to use my line tool to make this line and align it with 0.6 and mark the top as 0.7. Now, this is where the book tells you to go ahead and draw in the neck curve, but for me, for making the digital patterns, I find it a lot easier to go ahead and place all of the guideline markings and then to draw in the pattern afterwards, so that's what I'm going to do. So next we have 0.3 to 0.8. This is a horizontal line. This is half the back width minus 2.5. So for me, this is 14.7 centimeters. I'm going to draw my line and align this with 0.3 and then mark the new point as 0.8. I'm also going to square up from 0.8 to create a guideline for drawing the armhole a little bit later on. And then point 0.9 is the intersection of this line that we just created with the line marked point 0.4 and then 10 at the top. So I'm going to go ahead and mark those two points as well. Next, we have point 0.10 to point 0.11. This is just a length of one centimeter. So I'm going to make this line and then line it up with point 0.10. And again, here the book says to go ahead and draw in the shoulder, but I'm going to hold off and do that in just a few minutes. So next we have 0.3 to 12. This is one quarter of the bust measurement minus three centimeters. So I'm going to draw that line and then align this with 0.3 and mark the new point as 0.12. Then I'll go ahead and square down to 13 on the waistline and 14 on the hemline.
almost done with these guidelines here. The next one is 0.13 to 15. This is a horizontal line that is three centimeters, just a set length. And I'm going to align this with 0.13 and mark the new point as 0.15. So these are all of the guide markings that I need to draw in the back of the shirt. So I'm going to go ahead and lock this first layer and create a new layer. That way I can draw over this template without connecting any of my points. So I am now going to use the pen tool to connect the points. And I'm going to start here at 0.5 and connect it to 0.7. I will use the pen tool and hold down to create a curve here, and that creates our back neckline. Then I'm going to go from 0.7 to 11 to create the shoulder, then down to 0.9. I'm going to slightly curve this one just a little bit because this is going to become the armhole. I don't want this uh, curve to go out into the inside of that guideline from before, so I'm just going to make this very slight. And then down to 0.12, curving this line to create the full armhole here. Then from here, I will go down to the side seam. So from 0.12 down to 0.15, this cuts in at the waist, but you could always make this more of a straight cut if you didn't want it to be quite so fitted. Then I can go down to the hemline and I'm going to again, slightly curve this line here just to give a nicer shape and drape. Then I just need to connect across the hemline and then up the backside of the shirt. And suddenly all of these random lines and numbers have turned into the back pattern piece for our t-shirt pattern. So I'm going to copy this and paste it to the side. And then I'm going to make one change to the pattern piece to turn this into the front piece. So for the front piece, we need to add one more point. This is 0.0 to 0.16. And the measurement for this is one sixth of the neck size minus one centimeter. So for me, this is a little bit more than five centimeters. So I'm going to make this line and then align it with 0 0.0 and mark the new point as 0 0.16, just like we did for all of our other points. So with this in place, I'm going to go ahead and select the pattern piece, and then I'm going to use the scissors tool to cut this pattern piece at 0.16 and at 0.7 to remove the neckline from the original pattern piece. Then I can delete the piece that we just cut and use the pen tool to draw in the new neckline for the front piece. So now we have both our front and back pieces drafted here. So I'm going to go ahead and copy these and paste them into a new artboard just so that I can work with the fine tuning. To add seam allowance to these pattern pieces, I'm going to use the offset path tool and I'm going to use a one quarter inch seam allowance here since I'm planning to sew this on my serger. So you can see that outlines the entire pattern piece, but I do want to remove the seam allowance here at the back edge since this will be cut on the fold. So I'm just going to use my scissors to cut this right where that offset path aligns with the original outline of the shirt pattern piece. And then I can delete that and then just reconnect this using the pen tool. I'm going to go ahead and add seam allowance to the other piece as well. And then I'll change the stroke for the interior line to a dashed line so that I can tell that it is the stitching line. I'm also going to shrink the stroke on the overall pattern piece to be two points so it's not quite so thick when it prints out. And then I'll just label these using the text tool so I know what they are. I'm also going to make a little fold symbol by using the line tool to create two little lines and connecting them with the pen tool. And to add the arrows on the ends of this symbol, I will use the arrowheads once I have created the little bracket. And 
then finally, the last step I will do to these two pieces is to select all of the elements of the pattern piece and group them together so that they move as one piece. So the front and back pieces are now finished and now I can move on to the sleeve. So the first thing to do here is to square down and mark the top of this line as 0.17. So next we have 0.17 to 0.18. This is half the measurement of zero to three from the first block plus one centimeter. So I'm just using my line tool to trace this and I actually get a measurement of it that way, which worked a lot better than my previous method. So this is a 10 centimeter line here and I'm going to align this with the top of my first line and mark the lower point as 0.18. So next we have 0.17 to 0.19. This is the sleeve length plus four centimeters. So I'm going to draw this line and align it with 0.17 and square across from the bottom here and go ahead and mark my new point. And while I'm at it, I'm going to go ahead and square across from 0.18 as well because I forgot to do that earlier. For 0.17 to 20, we need to go back to the body section and measure the distance from 0.11 to 0.12 with a diagonal line. So I'm just using my line tool to do that, and I came up with the measurement of 18.37. So I'm going to make a new line using that measurement and align this with 0.17. And once I've aligned that with 0.17, I'm going to use my rotate tool, secure the point of rotation at 0.17, and then pull the lower part of the line to align with the guideline from squaring across at 0.18, and this becomes 0.20. Now 0.20 to 21 is one third of the measurement of 20 to 17, which is 6.12 for me. So I'm going to use my line tool here and measure up this distance on the line. So this diagonal line is the jumping off point for creating the top of the sleeve, but I'm going to put a few extra guidelines in here to help me get the curve correct. So here at the top line from 21 to 17, I'm going to split this in half by using my scissors tool. Then I'm going to create a line that is two centimeters long and align that with the center of this line. Then from point 20 to 21, I'm going to do the same thing, split this line in half and add a guideline, but this time the guideline is going to go down instead of up. And for this one, I want the line to be 0.6 centimeters long. In case you're wondering what that extra line is there, that is because I had arrowheads on these lines, so I'm going to remove those arrowheads so they don't get in my way, and then I will be ready to draw the curve. And then one last point before we get to the fun part of drawing the sleeve. This is point 19 to 22, which is at the hem of the sleeve. And this is half of the wrist measurement plus 0.5. So I'm going to make a horizontal line that is this measurement and align this with point 19. So now it's time to draw. So I'm going to lock the original layer and create a new layer, and then I can draw in the sleeve shape. Using the pen tool, I'm going to start at 0.17 and then go to 0 0.19, 0 0.22, and up to 0.20. And then from 0.20 to 21, I'm going to curve this down to align the center of the curve with the little guideline that I made before. And then from point 21 to 17, I'm going to do the same thing, aligning the center of the curve to the guideline, and that gives you the shape of the top of a sleeve. Mm -hmm. 
So we have finished drafting the sleeve piece and I'm going to go ahead and copy and paste this into the other artboard where I'm going to duplicate the piece and transform and reflect one side. This way I can make this into a full sleeve piece instead of one that is cut on the fold. I just thought that would work a little bit better for me. I'm going to align these two pieces together and then use the scissors tool to remove that middle line before using join to make them into one pattern piece. I'm going to make all of the same modifications for seam allowance and markings that I did on the front and back pieces, and then I'm ready to copy and paste these into my tiling template to print out. So once again, I am using my tiling template that I got from the pattern workshop class, which I highly, highly recommend. If you are at all interested in this content, it is well worth it. I have learned so much from it. So I'm just going to arrange these in the tiling template, and then I am ready to go ahead and save this as an Adobe PDF. I'm also quickly making a four by four square here. This is four inches by four inches, and I'm going to put this on page one so that as I print this out, I can first print this page and then measure the square to test that everything has printed out to the proper scale. So once I've saved this as a PDF, I can go ahead and open the file and you can see here that everything is numbered correctly and this is going to print out as a series of pages. And when I'm ready to print, I am going to make sure that the scale is set to 100. Mine tends to go to 108 for some reason on the percentage, but you just want to make sure that all of your measurements come through correctly. Okay, so that is all of the technical drafting stuff done. So now I can print this out and test it out with my fabric. So let's jump in to some sewing. So now that the pattern is drafted, I can get started making the shirt. So I am working with two yards of this jersey fabric that I got from Mood Fabrics. It's an ivory fabric with black stripes and I really love it. It's quite thin and very stretchy, but I think it works really well for a more fitted base layer like this. I have two yards of my fabric. I think I could have gotten away with less, but I wanted to have extra just in case the pattern didn't work out and I will definitely use the leftovers to make another shirt. So I'm just going to start by cutting the front and back pieces out on the fold and cutting out two of the sleeve pieces. I also went ahead and cut out a strip of fabric to use as the neckband, although I am going to change this later and you will see that later on in the video. But just for the purposes now, we have the front piece, the back piece, the two sleeve pieces, and a neckband piece. So now it's time to put the shirt together. So I'm going to start by placing the front and back pieces together with the right sides together and pinning them together along the shoulder and side seams. I'm going to sew all of my seams on my serger for this project because it is a knit fabric and that works really well for stretchy fabric like this. You could also use a wide zigzag stitch on your sewing machine or any other kind of stretch stitch. But for me, I'm going to use the serger. So I'm just going to pin all of these seams together and then sew them with a one quarter inch seam allowance on my serger.
Next, I'm going to quickly press these seams toward the back and then I can go ahead and put the sleeve pieces together. Moving on now to the sleeves, I'm going to start by folding my sleeve pieces with the right sides together and matching up the side seams. Then I'll sew these seams on the serger or overlocker using a one quarter inch seam allowance. And while I'm at the serger, I'm going to go ahead and run overlocking stitches all the way around the cuff of each sleeve and the bottom hem of the shirt. Now I'm ready to add the sleeves to the main part of the shirt. So I'm going to match these together with the right sides together. I like to always start with the side seam on the sleeve and the side seam on the shirt and match those up and then match the center of the sleeve to the shoulder seam. Then I'll just pin the sleeve into the armhole and sew this down using a one quarter inch seam allowance and the overlocker. Once the sleeves were set in, it was time to move on to the neckband. For the neckband, I'd cut a strip of fabric that was 75% of the length of the distance around the neck opening, and then I added a half of an inch for a seam allowance. So the idea is that this will be a little bit smaller than the neck opening, so you can stretch it to fit into place. Now I went ahead and sewed that short edge together to create a loop, and then I folded this piece in half so that it's doubled. Now I'm going to use pins to mark separating this into quarters and then I'll match the center to the center back and center front and then the other two markings will match to the shoulder seams when I pin this into the neck opening. So now I can pin the neck band to the neck opening with the folded side facing down and the raw edges touching. I'm just going to pin this to those quarter points that we marked so that I can stretch it to fit in between each of those points and get a nice even look. And now I'm just going to sew this in place using the serger and a one quarter inch seam allowance, being really careful to catch all layers of the neck band because I don't want to turn this towards the right side and find that I've left any gaps or anything. So I went ahead and pressed the neckband in place and we are almost done. All that's left to do is to hem the cuffs and the bottom hem. So I'm just going to fold over these edges about a quarter of an inch. Since I serged them, I'm just folding that serging under and making sure that this is a nice straight line, which the stripey fabric is very handy for, and pinning these hems in place. Then I'll take these over to the sewing machine and I'm going to use twin needle stitching on my regular sewing machine to sew the hems. It works really well for stretch fabrics like this and I think makes t-shirts and knit pieces like this look a little bit more professional. And 
and once I finished all of the hems, I gave the shirt a final steam and this project was done. It was so quick and easy to make and I love that I have a pattern that I drafted myself in my stash now for when I need a new t-shirt. Striped t-shirts like this are one of my favorite things to wear. I usually tuck them into jeans like I'm wearing here and I like that this is a bit of a longer length because it's really nice and fitted and easy to tuck in and will work with a variety of different outfits. So I'm really happy with how the finished product came out. So I hope this process was informative and interesting to watch. I know for myself, I found it really difficult to find resources about pattern drafting in Adobe Illustrator. So I hope that you found this useful. If that is some information that you are looking for, or if you're just looking for how to sew a t-shirt, I hope you enjoyed that part of the video as well. I really love how this one turned out and I'm excited to wear it. Thank you guys so much for spending your time here on my channel today. If you would like to subscribe and stay tuned for my future videos, you can do that by clicking the red button down below. Next week, I am planning planning to adapt this pattern to make a dress pattern. So if you're interested in staying tuned for that, you can go ahead and subscribe to see that video next week. Thank you guys again for spending your time here today and I will talk to you in my next video. Bye. Golden, I'll follow only golden.